Okay, let's see this last set of oop, bonding questions here. All right, and what I did was, again, I, I'm giving you all four questions that were part of the Regents, but it's actually the last question, well, the last two, I guess, that are in the bonding unit. But I figured you should go through all four and then come on back and check out your answers if you haven't worked them out already. All right, so let's take a look. For question 25, you're asked to identify the phase of chlorine at STP. Of course, chlorine, while it has a molar mass of 71, is a gas at STP. So at standard temperature and pressure, um, if we take a look at the table here, we have fluorine and chlorine that are gases. For the halogens, bromine is the only liquid nonmetal, and iodine is a solid. Also, as far as diatomics, these four are diatomics along with oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. And oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen are also gases. This is information that you should know. Could you possibly have figured it out using reference table S? You could take a look because, of course, the, the boiling point is there and you could compare it to 273, but I think it's information you should know. All right, let's take a look at 26. Determine the molar mass of calcium chloride. Well, that is the name, but they did give us the formula. So CaCl2. What I always tell my students, if you're not one of my students, list the elements, the number of times they appear in the formula. You're going to multiply by the gram formula, Moss, uh, Mosses. No, it's not the Mosses, it's the masses off the periodic table. Let's get rid of all of this. Oh, here we go. And let's see. Calcium is here. And I probably have to make this bigger so we can see. All right. Up oh, 40.08. All right. So we have 40.08 there. So 40, which is really 40.1. Chlorine is a little unusual because for chlorine, if I go ahead and move this over, and then we find chlorine, which is here, it's 35.458. So if I'm going to go out, it's going to be 35.5. So I have, I'm going to multiply these out. Of course, I'm running out of room. I'll put them down here, 40.1, and then 35.5 times 2, use your calculator, is going to be 71.0. I add them up, I get 0.11. So I get basically 111.1 grams per mole, or 111. Now, some students, their teachers didn't, tell them to go out any number of decimal places so they might have just done calcium and chlorine one times 40 which is 40 and then of course for chlorine two times 35 because it's actually 35.45 which rounds to 35 which is 70 and it adds to 110 and sure enough on the answer key New York State has a a range so you at least have to have 110 or 111 to get the answer, and I think that's fair. All right, so let's take a look at these last two that have to do with the bonding unit. It says the liquid, well, actually, this this one, it seems like it's the bonding unit because it's talking about empirical and molecular formula, but we're going to actually have to do a calculation here. So we want to know what the molecular formula is, and we have two pieces of information. We have the empirical formula, CHCl, and we have now the molar mass um, for this. And let me take a look. Well, okay. So we have, it's the liquid, so that's here. The molar mass is 97 grams per uh, mole. But they also gave us the name. 
So from the name, that's an organic compound, we could write the formula from there. But hold on a minute, let me clean up this whole area, and we'll take a look at both ways. Okay, so let's do the mathematical way first, and then I'll show you the second way. So we have the two pieces of, of information we need to go from empirical formula to molecular formula. And that is the formula itself and then the gram or the molar mass, gram formula mass or molar mass. So the first step would be to figure out the gram formula mass for CHCl. So what do I have? I have carbon once, hydrogen once, and chlorine once. And I would get the molar masses here off of the table. And I have 12, I have a 1, and I have a 35, or 35.5. Right? So I'm just going to add these up. 12, 1, and 35.4. Um, I'm sorry, sorry, 35.5, and we get 48.5. Okay, that's step one. In step two, I'm going to take my gram formula mass, divide it by the gram formula mass for the empirical formula. I'm going to plug it in my calculator, and I get two. So what that means is I'm going to take the empirical formula, and I'm going to multiply the subscripts, which are ones, by two. So it's C2, H2, and Cl2. And that's my molecular formula. Now, the other way I could have done it, is by the name. So I have 1,2-dichloroethene. So I could draw that molecule and then count everything up. It should come out exactly the same. So hold on. Let me erase everything that's in green so we can check it out in red. Okay. So for 1,2-dichloroethene, one di one, there is, of course, the three reference tables that have to do with organic. The E and E ending means that I have two carbons and I have a double bond. And eth means two carbons. And then 1,2-dichloro means I have a chlorine on the first carbon and a chlorine on the second. Now, every carbon has four bonds. So what do I have left? I used up three. That means I have a hydrogen and a hydrogen. So, it doesn't matter where I put the chlorine or the hydrogen as long as I have all four bonds. And guess what? We want to just know what the molecular formula is, so we're going to collapse it. So, if we do it in order of the empirical formula, I have carbon, but I have one, two of them. I have hydrogen, and I have one, two of them. And chlorine, I have one, two of them. And there it is once again. So there were two ways, actually, to answer question 27. All right, let's take a look at 28, which is the reason why I had all these questions here to begin with. It says, explain in terms of electrons why the compound containing calcium and chlorine is classified as an ionic compound. All right, so let's get rid of all the red, and here we go. So calcium and chlorine or calcium chloride I have calcium which is of course a metal and chlorine which is a non-metal right the ending is IDE when they're bonded together metals and non-metals form ionic bonds and there is a transfer of electrons so explain in terms of electrons why the compound containing calcium and chlorine is ionic it's ionic because calcium is going to transfer electrons to chlorine. And that's all you have to write. And that ends all of the bonding questions, or most of them. I think I found them all, but, you know, you never know. Some of them might show up and I miss them. But this is, this is a good indication of the types of questions that we might see in any future Regents exams based on the bonding questions from 2017. Oops, one other thing. I wanted to show you my four biggest fans. If you hear rustling going around in the house or barking or any kind of uh, sniffling or crying, there they are. 
Those are my four biggest fans. We have Rudy, Redford, Ringo, and Jake. And yes, they love the couch. So talk about some covalent bonding. They are sharing the couch. Keep working hard and good luck.